Okay, it's a lovely January day. It's minus three degrees outside and it's three degrees in our workshop. And we're gonna to do today a comparison between a stove fan and a Ricoh heater. Um, everybody asks what kind of difference does it make? Are they similar? Are they the same? Um, and we want to show the difference in the heat output and the heat uh, dispersal and the speed, the, the, the rate of heating up in the space. This is quite a big space. It's got 10 foot ceiling. It's 20 foot by 14 foot. Um, so it'll take us forever to you know, make any significant difference with the, the fan. So we'll just show a temperature difference. We've got the th um, thermometer set up there with the timer. Um, we're going to light the stove um, and burn identical amounts of wood. So the first one we'll do, so we've got um, three logs and 320 grams of kindling and two burner fire lighters. And we'll just light that, let it burn. We'll do the stove fan first, then we'll open the doors, cool it down again, oh whoa, and do the Rico heat second. Um, so just for a little experiment, let's see how we go. So to show you the kit that we're using, I bought a um, Thomason stove fan on Amazon. Um, it's a decent quality one re relatively, so it was 30 quid. Um, Aldi did them at 18 quid, um, but you know, try to get a decent quality one. Um, that of course compares to a Rico heat that about 300 quid, which you have to fit. This, really simple, just stick it on top of your fan. Um, it's got a thermoelectric generator. Heat comes through, the radiant heat from the stove, heats that, powers the fan, and that will then push the radiant heat from the stove out. That, of course, compares to the Ricoh heat, where the heat goes up. The flue is captured by the um, air going through, being pumped, um, on a 37 watt pump um, that runs actually at 17 watts when it's running but that you know, pumps out and forces that out so this requires no electricity only costs 30 quid this requires electricity costs 300 quid and needs fitting but let's see the difference so i'm making my upside down fire I've got a bed of ash which you always want when you're lighting a fire with wood two lighters So the time is 8.24, I'm lighting the fire. I'm trying to light the fire. Plenty of air through it. I'll put the fan the front it should be the hottest mirror. No, it's probably hotter. That needs a bit better. Okay, so put the fan so it should get hot quick and it'll be pushing the air out when it does that. Um, I'll get my thermometer and I'll test the surface of this. So the surface temperature is seven degrees and the stove fan surface is four degrees. Uh, just in front of the stove, it's three degrees. So five minutes in. The stove surface is 80 degrees. The surface below the fan is 15. At the side of the stove, it's 58. Oh, look at that. So the temperature there looks about 60, 63 degrees. Starting a little airflow there. So we've got that. Here's their airflow. Here's my hanky. Yeah, so it's moving it. See the temperature in front of that airflow. Eighty-three 
8 degrees. So I can't, I can't feel any driven heat. So now the stove surface is 145. Under the stove fan, it's 96. And the radiant heat is 10 degrees. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking here to see what the movement of the air is over, from the rising radiant heat. Um, so the flue's quite hot there. You can see, actually the air's moving into the stove, so the cold air's being drawn and, and rising up the stove. That's really... <coughs> um, so actually the cold air is being drawn towards the stove and rising up the, the, the flue there. You can see that movement. It's amazing. If you, if you saw the simulation video, it shows, it shows really clearly how tight the heat stays to the stove and to the flue when you've got it like this because the heat is drawing, the rising heat is drawing the cold air into it. So it actually probably kind of cools the area um, around it. But the stove fan is reversing that. Well, it's blowing it out. So that's great. And the temperature over here. Oh, look at that. 4.1 degrees. Okay, look at that, 20 minutes, six degrees. So it risen three degrees at that distance. The stove surface now is 240 degrees. Beneath the fan, it's 225. In front of the fan, it's 45. At the bottom of the flue, the radiant temperature is 30 degrees. And at the top of the flue, the radiant temperature is 25 degrees. The surface of the flue at the top is 115 and at the bottom is 265. In front of the stove, it's 18 degrees. One meter away in front of the fan, it's 11 degrees. Let's have a look at the airflow in front of the fan. So, still drawing cold air towards the flue. The fan is now, it's got a decent, decent airflow. That's all right, isn't it? Okay, we're at 55 and it's um, nearly 11 degrees. So now in front of the fan, it's 55 degrees. And the stove surface is 365 degrees. A meter away in front of the fan, it's 13 degrees. Two meters away in front of the fan, it's nine degrees. We've lost the effect out to there, but um, any closer and, the, and and you can feel that there's a difference. So if you had a couple of those on there, that is making, you know, that is making a decent difference to the output of the stove. Um, so what I'm going to do now is strip this out, open the doors, let it cool down and then we'll do another fire with the Rico heat. And the time there, so it's 8.59. Okay, the room's cooled down. Um, it is now about zero outside, 0.2 degrees. Um, inside, 3.3 degrees. Um, but the one difference is the stove 
it's still 30 degrees. So that's that's still warm, so it's got a bit of an advantage there. Um, but the air coming through will be <coughs> will be at zero degrees. The room temperature is four degrees and the flue temperature is 11 degrees. Exactly the same wood, exactly the same configuration, exactly the same weight of kindling. So we've lit it and they're turning on the rig heat. So the air temperature there, Yeah, because it's coming through, it's, it's already coming through. Yeah, 35, because the, the flue is preheated. But it, in, in any case, it doesn't take long to get up to there. But that, you know, that temperature is, don't forget that, that the air coming through there is coming in at, um, it starts off at zero. If you look at the airflow out of the recreate, to start with, so you just put it there. It's not much more than the um, than the stove fan was producing. Now at the nozzle, it's 160 degrees, and further away here, 60 degrees. Whereas in front of the window, it's 8 degrees. And the stove surface is 60 degrees. Okay, so we're, we're at 10 minutes now. 6.7 degrees there. Airflow, if you look at that across here. See how that goes. We'll bring it across closer. So the temperature of that airflow. One meter away is 20 degrees. At the nozzle, it's 300 degrees. At the bottom of the flue, it's 225 degrees. And at the top of the flue, it's 100 degrees. The stove surface is 200 degrees. So it's still at the moment quite a narrow jet. So, but, but what the jet is doing is pulling out <coughs> and it's drawing the radiant heat with it. So that's <coughs> most of the heat displacement is not, you know, from the whole thing is not the air from the flue, it is the fact that the air, the hot air from the flue, then draws the radiant heat with it. So that, um, and what happens is it draws the cold air in, the hot air in, brings that and starts to, it will start to oscillate and it, it will start to move that wider and wider as the airflow caused by the hot and the cold air joining starts to do this. Ten nineteen, temperature is eleven point four. A meter away, it's fourteen degrees. The stove surface is two hundred and sixty degrees, and the bottom of the flue is also two hundred and sixty degrees. At the top of the flue, it's 145 degrees. In front of the door, it's 35 degrees. At the nozzle, it's 450 degrees. And at the edge of the stove here, it's 80 degrees. 25, 26. It seems to be about the sweet spot there. So the heat's rising. It's obviously curving up as it comes out. The jet's curving up like that. It does, it feels warm on my face. So let's have a look at the... Um... Yeah, 
the airflow. sort of yeah you can clearly feel the airflow to here um, so that's after so that's 27 and the temperature is up to 16.8 so yeah outside temperature yeah, outside temperature is still a tiny bit above zero. Fifteen there. Fourteen there. Actually, you, you can now feel. The temperature that the, the the temperature spread is much wider as it comes out here. Thirteen degrees there. So it's thirteen degrees right out here. Okay. That's pretty mad, because that was three degrees a very short time ago. Let me just check that. Just turning it on and off in case it's frozen. Nope, that's 13 degrees. It's 15, it's 14, 14 degrees over there. It's bounced off the back wall. If I go high, yep, yeah, it still is. That's my nice reflection. 70 degrees on there. Let's just check the outside temperature because that seems crazy. Okay, so outside it is warmed up with the sun to the stonking temperature of one to two degrees. Yeah. One degree, two degrees, let's say two degrees. There's the pump, that's where the air is coming from. And inside, yeah, let's check that. So the door's been open. Yeah. It's 13 degrees. I don't know why I like 13 degrees so much. 15 100 over here we're on 31 it's 19 degrees okay so that's the difference 19.9, it's 32, so it's just over half an hour. It is the swirling action, it's the stirring action that's making the huge difference. Um, it's powered, that's running on 17 watts, pumping it through, accelerating it, bringing it out, 
drawing in the cold air, getting that oscillation effect going. It's, so it's stirring. Well, let's have a look. Actually, so the temperature, not there, is 17 degrees. Nineteen degrees. Eleven degrees. Eight degrees. Seven degrees. On the floor. Twelve thirteen. The woods warmed. Ten degrees because you got cold airflow you can you can feel the cold airflow coming into the stove you can feel that there and rising up into the you can feel it rising up into the stove so we've still got the cold airflow effect because you've got to have that for the combustion but it's rising up there And the difference, the distance in the warmth, that's 19 degrees there. The distance in the evenness of the warmth. So it's 35 minutes now. It's, it's just immense. This is now a comfortable temperature. So there you are. These are great. That worked well. It made quite a big difference to the way that the heat was pushed out from the stove. You could really tell the difference, you know, in the airflow just in front of it. So that's great. But compared to that, it's nothing. This actually is a central heating system. The whole place is now warm, and that's after just half an hour. Um, the action is totally different. This is pushing the radiant heat out, taking, you know, creates electrical, it's a thermoelectric generator, takes the power, creates an airflow, pushes the radiant heat away. This is pumped, it's 10 times more expensive, and it's, I don't know, 30, 40 times more effective. So, these are lovely, that's fantastic. Thanks very much. And another reason the Rico heat is so much more effective is that nearly two hours after that initial burn, don't forget three logs, 320 grams, you can see there's just embers in there, chugging slowly away. The temperature here, still 120 degrees. So the stove top, 130 so the stove is cooling through the flue flue there is 80 odd degrees and as it cools the, the flue gases cool the flue cool the stove up the flue we're picking that up and blowing that out and because it's pumped it doesn't matter that there isn't much heat going up there the pumping still continues and it maintains the temperature you can see that it's 20 degrees. We've been going in and out. The door's been open, um, but the temperature in here is still 20 degrees. Um, and that's the massive advantage of the Rico heat is that it will carry on pumping heat for hours after you let your stove go out. Thanks very much.